Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to connect to a Windows instance in Microsoft Azure. First, I will create a Windows Server instance in Azure and connect to that instance from home computer by using remote desktop. I logged into Azure portal. From the home page, I will select create a resource. And then I will select Windows Server 2019 Data Center from the popular product. My subscription is Azure for Students. I can create a resource group or I can use an existing resource group. I don't have a resource group, so I will create a new one. Virtual machine name, I will give a name that represents the virtual machine. For example, Windows Server 2019. For region and availability options, I will leave the default. If I'm in a production environment, then I will choose the region based on the locations of the users of this machine. For image, I will leave Windows Server 2019 data center. If I want a different edition, I will choose that edition from the drop down. For the virtual machine size, I will choose a smaller size such as one virtual CPU and 3.5 gigabyte of memory. Next, I have to create an administrator account. I cannot use the default administrator account because it is reserved. So I will use something like my name and then I will set a password. I will retype the password. The password must be at least 12 character and should have combinations of lowercase letter, uppercase letter, special character and numbers. Since I want to connect to this instance from home, so I will allow inbound connection by selecting public inbound port and allow selected port. The default port for RDP is 3389. If I have a license of my own, then I will select this option. I'm going to leave it the default and go to disk configuration. Here I will use a low performance disk since I'm not in a production environment. So I will choose a standard HDD and make sure the disk will be deleted when I delete the VM by keeping this checkbox checked. I will leave the encryption type as default. In a production environment, I might need to create additional disk for saving data. I will not create additional disk and go to network configuration. Here I can create a new virtual network or I can use the one that the system will create. I will leave the default. The machine will be put in 10.0.0.0 private network and I will leave the default. I need to have a public IP to be able to connect from home. If I leave the public IP as none, then I will be able to connect to this instance from other machines that are in this network. However, I will not be able to connect to the instance from home. So I will select the option new public IP. I will leave the NIC card security group as basic and for this network settings I need to keep the inbound port allowed. I will also select the option delete the public IP and the NIC card when the VM is deleted. And then scroll down. Since I'm not using any load balancer, so I will leave it as unchecked and go to management configuration. Here I will leave the basic plan for free, default monitoring, 
I'm not using Active Directory, so I'll leave it. I can auto shut down the machine at a specific time of the day. If I check this checkbox, and then I can choose the time. For example, I want to shut down the machine at 6 p.m. every day. I don't want to get an email about this shutdown, so I will uncheck this one. I will not create backup, so I will leave this unchecked. And then I will go to advanced configuration. If I want extensions to be installed with this instance, then I will choose the extensions. I will leave this setting as default. And also if I want any applications to be installed, then I can choose the applications. I'll leave that one as default as well. Next, I will go to tags. I can create tags by typing in name value pairs. Tag can be used to group resources and all the resources in the same group can be found by searching with tag name value pair. For example, I can name a tag as OS and then the value is Windows Server. Next, I will go to review. Let's check the details of the configuration. Everything looks okay. If I need to change any of this configuration, then I can go back to previous tabs and fix them. And when I'm ready, I will click on the create button. So I create the instance now. It's going to take two, three minutes to finish creating this instance. Here on the right side corner, I see a message saying deployment succeeded. Now I can go to the instance and see the detail. I will select go to resource. On this screen, it shows the detailed configuration and specification of the instance. For example, the computer name, the operating system, and other information such as public IP, private IP, machine configuration, one virtual CPU and 3.5 gigabyte of memory. Next, I'm going to connect to this instance from home by using remote desktop. So I'll go to the start menu and type in remote desktop. The remote desktop connection was opened. It's showing the last machine name that I connected to by using remote desktop to change this configuration and use Windows Server in Azure. I will go to show options and for the computer name I will use the public IP address from Azure platform for this Windows Server instance so I'll copy that and then paste in the computer field for username I will use the administrator username that I created when creating this Windows Server instance so it was this one I can save this connection information by clicking on the save as and then giving a name to this connection such as Windows Server 19 underscore Azure in future I would be able to use this connection name to load the configuration information and connect easily Next, I will click on connect. Here it is asking, do you trust this remote connection? I do trust, so I will click on connect. Here I need to give the password for the user account that I created while creating this instance. So the password was and then click on OK. Showing the certificate information, I click on Yes.
it's loading the desktop of the Windows Server at the Azure platform. I will close this message. When you log into a Windows Server machine, by default, it shows the Server Manager. The Server Manager has been loaded. I can go to the local server and see the detailed information of the server. For example, this is the computer name, the word group name, not in a domain, and other information. I can configure this server by adding different roles and features. In that case, I need to go through this wizard. There are many different types of roles. For example, if I want to create a domain, then I will select the Active Directory Domain Services. To create a DNS server, I can use this one. I can use DHCP server. I can create a remote access server or I can create a web server. If I install any of these services, a new item will be available under Tools menu. I'm not going to install any roles and features today, so I'll cancel this one. The services that are already loaded will be available under Tools menu. And to remove any of the services, I can go to Manage and then Remove Roles and Features. Anyway, I did connect to this Windows Server instance by using the Remote Desktop. I can connect to any Windows machine such as Windows 10 or Windows Server in Azure or any other cloud platform by enabling Remote Desktop in the instance and use Remote Desktop connection software from home computer. If this server is used in a production environment, then I will keep it running. As I used it for a test environment, I will shut down this instance by going to the Start menu and then select Shutdown. It brought me back to my host computer and if I want to use this server in near future, I will keep the server but keep it in shutdown state. If I don't need the instance at all, then I will remove it. To remove a resource, I can go to the All Resources tab and then select the resource that I want to remove. I will remove all of these resources at once. So I will select all of them and then click on delete. I will type YES and delete. It will take one or two minutes to delete all the resources. And that is the end of this video. I hope you found this video was helpful. Thank you for watching.